Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Crichton and today I'll be bringing you a bit of a tutorial on Starfarer by Fractal Softworks. To start with, we're going to go over a little bit of the controls, just in case you didn't know. We will select the Turning the Tables mission because it is very easy. You can probably win this game without piloting at all if you really wanted to, which would be perfect for playing around with some of the controls. Now, Starfarer controls using the W, A, S, and D keys, as well as the mouse pointer. W gives you forward thrust, S brakes and then reverse thrust, A and D gives you rotational control. The mouse lets you pan around the screen, a much useful thing for finding enemies. Uh, mouse button 1 will shoot weapons that you have selected, and mouse button 2 will activate the shield. I currently have missile selected, so clicking mouse 1 will activate the missile. Now here we have the map screen, or tactic screen, however you wish to view it. The map screen allows you to control the rest of your vessels. In Starfarer, you only control your command vessel, which is seen here. Now the control system is a little deceptive at first, because you don't directly control your vessels, rather you give them orders. This is done by clicking a point in space, or a enemy vessel or allied vessel, and issuing, issuing, tuh, sorry about that, issuing a specific order in regards to that. Then the fleet will work out how to take into that order and assign the appropriate vessels. For example, the Navboy and Sensor Array can be captured, assaulted, patrolled, or various other waypoint tasks, which we will not get into right now. The capture assignment orders a single fast vessel to try and capture the point and then return to the main fleet, whereas the assault command will order all available ships not currently on other assignments to take this position and then to defend this position. This means that as long as you have one assault or defend order on the map, you can control whereabouts your fleet will hang out. This is exceptionally useful for taking control of the map away from your enemy. In the current situation we're in, we probably want to take control of one of the points and sit on it, because there are a lot of enemy fighters, but they don't have any hard hitters. Because of this, they really cannot fight for territory. The other commands that are available are, that are of most importance are Strike and Harass. Strike tells your heavy hitters in the fighter and frigate department to attempt to take out a enemy uh, cruiser, capital ship, destroyer, or destroyer, yes. Harass sends out light, medium range, or long range vessels to engage the enemy ship, but to avoid taking damage. This is a very good defensive ability, to annoy or disable vessels without putting too much risk on your fleet. Finally, there is the rally commands, which allow you to assign certain different types of groups. Fire support, for instance, being all super long range artillery fire, namely mostly missiles. Strike Force being the bomber and torpedo armed vessels, the carrier group 
this one is very important, are the vessels which can repair and refit your fighter groups. Now we'll play out the rest of the mission and see how we go. The enemy fighters are generally not able to do too much to me because as you'll see here, they are Talon class interceptors, which are pretty much the worst class of interceptors. You can safely ignore them, they are only useful for taking out other enemy fighters, which are very flimsy. The main objective of this mission is to take control of the map while protecting your uh, cruiser. Your cruiser, though, is very reliable. Now, here you'll see two bars hovering over my vessel. Oh, that was a close one. Flux and hull. Flux is the amount of energy that your vessel currently holds, and hull is the amount of hit points that your enemy has. Flux, if it ever reaches the full portion of the meter, will cause an overload, like you saw the enemy carrier going through just then. And this disables all the uh, this disables all movement and weapons and shield fire for a short time. You regain control of your vessel's movement rather rapidly, but the weapons and shield functions will remain disabled until all of the flux is dissipated. You can avoid. You can avoid this situation, however, by pressing the V key, or vent, which causes your system to vent all available flux, still disabling weapons and shields, but leaving you control of movement, and, more importantly, draining the flux at twice the rate that an overload would. One key thing to keep in mind, though, is when you are overloading, generally around the 60% mark, you can start venting. This will save you a great deal of trouble in recovery time, especially in a large fight. That said, this can leave you quite vulnerable, so don't do it when you've got a missile barrage coming at you. There is one last element to keep in mind when playing Star Sarah. Down here at the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see an overlay of your vessel and the amount of armor that is currently applied to your vessel. You'll see there are portions of the vessel which have burnt out on the screen and are darkened on the display, which represent the armor having burnt off. Initially, when the armor is full, like in these sections, you will basically receive no damage to the hull when taking hits from explosive weaponry. However, when the armor is stripped off, mostly by explosive weaponry, it will start hitting directly into the hull, which will then lower the second bar, which, no doubtless, when Reaching zero will cause your vessel to explode and most likely cause the failure of the mission you're currently undertaking. Well, that concludes the basic controls of Star Thera. Thank you.